united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Good morning, dear ones. You know, I read some disturbing comments this week about someone who was very upset about what was going on in their city uh, that they loved. There was a devastation. Uh, it was actually very shocking. There's been fighting and violence and vandalism, fighting in the streets, and uh, there have been attacks. There's been looting. And uh, this is a city that they, they loved. There were buildings being burned down, there were monuments, even religious monuments, being destroyed and pulled down. And this is a city that they grew up in, that they raised their family in, they got married in, they, they worked in, and they were so upset. And the leaders of the city have not been able to do much about it or were unwilling to stop all of this violence that's been going on. And this was causing this person a, a lot of dismay, frustration, anger, uh, crying even. And uh, all kinds of frustration was being poured out of their heart. Now, was this New York City? Was it Minneapolis, Chicago? Was it Portland or Seattle? Or was it uh, Washington, D.C.? No, these comments were written actually 26 centuries ago by a man named Jeremiah in a book in the Bible called Lamentations. And he was talking about what was going on in his beloved city, Jerusalem. And uh, the cause of all this destruction was the rebellion and sin of God's people against obeying and following the Lord. But you know, in the midst of all this heartache and destruction and judgment going on, in his city, he never lost sight of one thing. And after pouring out his anger and his sorrow and his shock, Jeremiah says in this letter, yet I call this to mind and therefore I have hope because the Lord's faithful love does not perish. His mercies never end. They are new Every morning, great and beyond measure, is your faithfulness. And he was saying that in the midst of despair, he recalled that God is faithful. And I want to say this morning to you that there's one thing that I am absolutely and unequivocally can say, and that is God is faithful. And when we read these words, I want you to notice three things. First of all, God's love, his faithful love, is never runs out. He says his mercies never come to an end. Psalm 100 says his faithfulness continues through all generations. That's one attribute about God. He is always faithful. Secondly, God gives us just what we need for each day. His mercies are new every morning. Every day you can wake up with the confidence that God will give you what you need to get through that day because God is faithful. And thirdly, I want you to notice that his love and his faithfulness is beyond any measure. Great, magnificent, unbelievable, and unchanging is his faithfulness and his love. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful, says the writer of Hebrews in Hebrews 10, 23. And Jeremiah is telling us something very important and very profound, something that you need to understand and listen to today, and that is no matter what the circumstances are going on in your life, or will go on in your life, 
that one thing you can be certain of, that God is faithful. And if you will let, look to him, he will get you through everything and anything every day. You know, when Moses was about to die and he was quite a, a man of God and God used him to do amazing miracles and amazing things, he wanted to leave something with his people and really with us. And so he said this in Deuteronomy 7, 9. Know that the Lord your God, he is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. Have you ever been asked by someone, how do you know God exists? Well, I've been asked that a bunch of different times. And, you know, I try to think of some very deep and profound answer. But all I can say is, yeah, I know God exists because he's been faithful so many, many, many times, thousands of times over my lifetime. That's how I know that God exists. He is faithful to his word. He's been faithful to me. And I am a living testimony of that. I think there's such a refreshing contrast to what we see going on in the world around us. In fact, the Bible says in Proverbs 20, many a man proclaims his faithfulness, but a faithful man, a truly faithful man, who can find? Hallmark card, I saw this recently. They have one card that says, I can't promise you forever, but I can promise you today. I can't promise you forever, but I can promise you today. How are you supposed to build a marriage or a relationship or friendship on that? Well, I can't say I'm going to be a faithful and loyal to you tomorrow, but I'll be faithful and loyal to you today. What kind of a line is that? That's not faithfulness. Oh, man. You know, I'm, I'm wearing a shirt. I got this made for me by a lady in Rwanda when I was there about three or four years ago. And uh, Rwanda has gone through so much pain and heartache through their genocide in uh, the early 90s. And they're, they're coming out of it, but there's still been a lot of pain and heartache as this nation is rebuilding itself. But there's a move of God going on and many people are turning to the Lord and finding that God is faithful, even though many people have not been. But uh, we were in a restaurant, we stopped uh, to uh, eat, get a bite to eat. And it was a little roadside, little restaurant, small little place. And we put in our order with uh, the owner. He was the owner and the waiter and everything. And we were having a little conversation with our host. And all of a sudden, we saw the uh, uh, owner uh, run out of the restaurant and out the front door. So we said to our, our guy, what, what's that all about? Where's he going? Oh, he said, the electricity has gone out. So he has to run down to the street and buy some more electricity. So he said, the power here is so unreliable. It can go out at any time. And when it does go out, you have to go and pay and buy some more electricity. And I was thinking, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of people like that. They give their word that they're faithful and loyal. They'll do this, they'll do that. Oh, you can count on me. I'll be there. I'll show up. I'll help you here. But it's just words. And they're really pretty unreliable. You know, you work for a company for years and one day they say, you know, we're, we're downsizing and we just can't use you anymore. So we're sorry. Here's a severance package and you're gone. Or you trust your spouse who said those words, you know, I will be faithful to you till death us do part. And yet you find out one day they're having an affair with somebody. Or you share a confidence with somebody, something that's deeply personal, and then you find out later that they've told, you know, somebody else or other people that deep secret, and you're very ashamed and embarrassed. Or a friend you trusted, for whatever reason, walks out of your life, says, I'm gone. And, uh, you know, even the Beatles saying, all you need is love, and then they broke up. So where are you going to find anyone that you can trust? Well, I want to tell you today that there is someone 
that you can absolutely trust, that he is absolutely faith, faithful and trustworthy. And you can place your life and your future upon him. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is reliable. Now, how do you develop trust and confidence in your life? By trusting the Lord who feeds. He wants us to feed on his faithfulness. I want you to listen to this verse. It's an interesting verse. It says, I'm going to read it in the Passion Translation. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness or feast on his faithfulness. Isn't that interesting? Feast or feed on God's faithfulness. That's how you develop real confidence in your life. Now, let me give you three very powerful aspects of God's faithfulness to you. Things you can feed on and build your life upon. Feed on the faithfulness of God's forgiveness. Bible says, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and he's just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. I love that word all. You got to do a study in the Bible of all the words, uh, verses that talk about all. He forgives us of all our unrighteousness. Boy, that's freeing, isn't it? Every mess up I've ever made is completely gone. You know, the hardest person I have to forgive in my life, I don't know about you, but it's myself. Man, why did I do that? Why did I say that? You know, and, and we can beat ourselves up. Why didn't I do that? Why didn't it? We had a big rainstorm three weeks ago. Maybe you remember it was a Sunday afternoon. I was picking up somebody from the airport and it was so coming down so hard. I could hardly see in front of me. And I drove my van right into this massive uh, water in an intersection. And it just uh, totaled out my car. And I thought, why did I do that? I should have known better than to drive and think I could get through that puddle of water. Well, praise the Lord that God is a forgiving God. He cleanses us from all our mess ups. And the way uh, we learn to overcome this and develop just peace in our life is by relying on God's total and unconditional cleansing and forgiveness. And I need to learn to live and feed upon his complete forgiveness. I do a, a lot of dumb things in my life and don't look too self-righteous because you do too. But we can go to the one who is perfect and not only perfect, but he's perfect in love and his faithfulness. And he can cleanse us. And, um, you know, I have a friend who uh, uh, did something kind of embarrassing. He uh, you know, when you go through the airport line, you got to go through that, uh, uh, the check check lines where you, they, they check you out, make sure you're not carrying anything you're not supposed to be. And uh, he had to take his belt off and put it through the scanner. And he uh, was kind of overweight. So he took his belt off and his pants fell down right in front of everybody in that line. Well, what do you do when you're in the middle of an airport and your pants fall down? Well, you pick them back up and you keep on going. And that's what we have to do every day in our lives. No matter what we go through or what we do or what people do to us, know that God is a forgiving God, cleanses us, and you keep on going. There's a second uh, way to develop a confidence in your life and just a peace, and that is you feed on the faithfulness of God's help in trials. Have you been going through anything that's been kind of challenging to you? Man, everything seems like in our house lately has been breaking down, falling apart. And uh, my wife has had some health issues. And we've just had to call upon the Lord. Lord, how are we going to get through all this? These are things that kind of keep me up at night. 
and make me, uh, keep uh, me from sleeping. And so I just have to say, Lord, it's no use both of us staying awake all night. I got to give it to you. Your shoulders are a lot bigger than mine. So you take hold of this and uh, I'm just going to have to trust you. And you know, every single issue God is taking care of because he's so faithful. The Bible says no temptation or testing has overtaken you that is not common to man, but God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted or tested beyond what you can bear, but with the test or the temptation will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under us. Now, you know, I'm not much of a handyman. And when things break down in my house, you know, I always groan and say, okay, do I have to pay, you know, a million dollars to bring in some repair guy to fix it? Or what am I going to do here? How can I fix it? And I suppose there's some things that I could fix and I'm kind of klutzy, but I've had to learn, Lord, help me, show me how to fix this. We've had ants crawling all over our cupboard. We've had things break down uh, in our backyard and appliances recently. And I've just had to, and every time I go to the Lord, it's amazing. God just has a way to get me through it. Either he'll show me uh, a solution and show me how to get things fixed, or he'll take me to somebody who can get it done. And I just have to thank the Lord today, praise you, Lord, because you are faithful in helping me go through each trial and testing. And God always helps me find a way out. And sometimes they're little things and sometimes they're big things. But in each area of trial, you can just say, Lord, I'm going to feed on your faithfulness. You said you are faithful. He says, call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will glorify me. So I'm going to take your, your word and trust you. And we can feed on the promises of God. You know, the Bible, this book is filled with promises. Someone said there's 10,000 promises, probably even more than that. But my question is, how many of you are, how many of these are you collecting? How many of these are you living in? Are you standing on? That old gospel hymn, standing on the promises of God. I read recently about uh, uh, old grandma who had lived over 90 years old and she died. And she kept close company with the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, when she died, her grandkids came in and they looked among her things and by her favorite chair where she always read her Bible every day and had her reading glasses there. Uh, she had this old dog-eared Bible and they, they looked through it and uh, all the way through the Bible, she had written these words, T-P, T-P. And they were wondering, what in the world does that mean? And they couldn't figure out. It was just marked all over by TP. And finally, they looked at the last fly leaf of the Bible. And then, it, uh, then they understood. It said, tried and proved. I've tried and proved this promise of God in his word. And it is true. Not one good word has has failed of all thy good promises he gave through his servant Moses. It says in 1 Kings 8, 56. I have a question for you. How many of God's promises have you tried and proved? And said, oh yeah. You know, when our kids were little, we kept a notebook. And in there, whenever we had a, a, a prayer request or a need, we'd write down the prayer request and we'd get the kids together and we'd pray. So if they lost some money or lost a toy or got into trouble or had an owie or hurt themselves, we would just pray and say, Lord, help us find this thing that was lost or help fix this or heal this. And um, then we would write in the notebook the date uh, that it was uh, answered, the date we found that lost toy, the date that this, you know, was, uh, this problem was solved. And every once in a while, we'd go through that book and I'd show the kids, see how faithful God has been? Remember when you lost this and you couldn't find it and we prayed and asked Jesus to help us find it? And then this is the date we found it. It was there. And, you know, 
we ought to each keep a little notebook like that. And you look back and said, yes, God is real. God cares even about the little things in my life. And God is faithful. God is faithful. And we need to feed on the faithfulness of God's work. God's work in you. God is working in you right now. Maybe you don't feel it right now. Maybe you don't see it right now, but God is at work. He's either trying to get your attention or he's working in you in such a way and maybe you don't even see it. But he who calls you, 1 Thessalonians 5, 24, he who calls you is faithful and he will complete his work in you and through you. God will complete his work in you. Whatever God calls you to do, he's faithful and he will complete it. He will complete his will in you. He who is, who is uh, it says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians 1, 6. Maybe it's a ministry. Maybe you teach a Sunday school class or your church or lead a Bible study. Or maybe it's just uh, being a faithful parent or a spouse or uh, a work, whatever you do at your work or, our, or job, whatever it is. God is working out his will in your life. He has a purpose and a plan for your life and he's working it out right now. And I think it's exciting to know that every day God's working another chapter in my life of his will in my life. And I think the greatest demonstration of God's faithfulness when you take everything else aside is the cross. Every time I look at the cross on which Jesus, the Son of God, the God who flung the stars into space, the God who created everything in this universe that we live in, everything in our solar system, every planet, everything that is on this earth and every person in this earth, this is the same God who got up on a cross and died for you and for me. And he was faithful to the end. It says, who for um, the, the joy set before him, the joy of seeing you and I forgiven and living eternally in heaven with him, who for that joy endured the cross, despised the shame, there are so many times he probably could have felt, what am I doing? Why am I going through this? For these ungrateful little worms on this speck of dust called planet Earth, they don't even always obey me. They don't follow me. But he was faithful to the end. And at the end, his last breath, he said, it is finished. That your sins are forgiven. They're completely, totally finished and forgiven. Just look to him. And when I look at the cross, I see that's faithfulness. The perfect God who had no sin to die for for himself died for me because he loved me that much and he was faithful. You know, Thomas Chisholm was a man who had a lot of physical problems. He was born uh, the year after the Civil War uh, ended and he, he had trouble. He was a school teacher for a while, and then he was in business for a while. He edited a newspaper for a while. Um, he was an insurance agent for a while, but his health kept, you know, keeping him from really fulfilling all the things he really wanted to do. And one day, 1941, he had lived a, a fairly a long life, even with all his physical problems. And he sat down and he wrote this in his diary. My income has never been very much. My health has kept me from doing a lot of things over the years. But I never want to forget to record here that God has been unfailingly faithful. He's a covenant-keeping God, and he has given me many wonderful displays of his care and love for which I am filled with astonishing gratefulness. And he wrote this hymn. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, 
thou forever will be. And then he uses these words. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Could you say that this morning, that God has been faithful to you? Could you sing, great is thy faithfulness? I can say that. I got in an airplane uh, coming home from Russia a number of years ago. I'd done some teaching over there. And I sat next to a, a, an older pastor who was retired and he was coming back. And uh, we got talking, sharing with each other about ministry and church and following the Lord and all the things we've been through. And he made this statement. I'll never forget it. He said, I haven't been the best preacher in the world. I haven't had the largest church in the world. I've actually pastored a lot of small churches. I haven't had all the kind of uh, accolades and things that sometimes some preachers uh, get. And I haven't had the biggest salary in Rome. But one thing no one can say about me, that I have been faithful because God has been faithful to me. No one can outfaithful me to a faithful God. And I thought, wow, that's what I want to say. God, you've been faithful to me. Maybe the greatest gift I can give to you is in my own humble way to be faithful to you, to say I've run the race, I have finished the course, and there is for me now laid up a crown of righteousness. May the Lord bless you. Jesus, I pray that you will help everyone who's listening in my voice to make a new commitment to be faithful to you because you have been so faithful to us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you and give you a great day and a great week. 